a new group of Florida parents is pushing back against what it calls a rising tide of right-wing extremism in the state, especially when it comes to schools and culture wars. And the new group is called Parenting with Pride. It's from a partnership with groups like the Human Rights Campaign, PFLAG, and Equality Florida. It can be seen as a kind of a response to the far-right parents group Moms for Liberty. So as we, as I mentioned on our Zoom, we have we're going to talk about for the rest of the hour with Jennifer Solomon, Equality Florida's Parents and Family Support Manager, who is going to talk about parenting with pride. So welcome to WMNF, Jennifer. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you could join us. And I've described a little bit about what parenting with pride is about, but you can do it better than I can. So why was it formed and what kinds of services and supports does it offer? So basically our Parenting with Pride program was launched as a response to all the laws that have been passed and really um, parents being fed up with politicians waging a war on our families, um, banning books, censoring curriculum, um, you know, whitewashing history. Really um, parents are ready to take back our parental rights and Parenting with Pride is going to offer families um, a place to be educated, uh, to be supported and also to advocate for their families. It's interesting that you use the phrase parental rights because ever since 2020 through the pandemic, we've been hearing about parental rights, but often it's from groups like Moms for Liberty who say, you know, we want to have the right to um, send our kids to school without masks or whatever the issue is. And parents' rights uh, kind of has come to represent, at least until now, this kind of right-wing kind of uh, approach or, or view of things. But you are saying that um, there are people who aren't on the far right who also should have parents' rights. Absolutely. Um, I'm a parent. I have a child in the public school system, and my rights are just as important as someone, as a mom for liberty. I think that the, the bottom line is, as parents, we all want the right, the parental right, to raise our children the way that we see fit. And government really has no place in that. And, you know, unfortunately, Moms for Liberty um, are very loud. Um, you know, they're really not, you know, Ron DeSantis has said that this is the voice of parents in, in the state of Florida, and I disagree. Um, I think the the voice of parents in the state of Florida are uh, parents that want to make sure that our kids um, have a safe learning environment, have a place where they are getting um, information so that they can go on to college, that they can go on um, to become productive adults in society. And so parental rights are not just for some, they're for all. And some of these laws that have been passed have been targeting specifically our trans youth and we want to empower our parents to let them know that they also have rights. Um, so it's not just rights for some, it's rights for all. Laws that target trans youth. Uh, one of the things that we're hearing in school boards across the country, uh, sorry, across the state, as, as school is starting, we're seeing these permission slips that have are coming back that parents have to sign if, Johnny wants, if jo uh, Jonathan wants to be called Johnny. They have to get a permission slip and it kind of stems back to this uh, maybe if if you'd let me use this word, this phrase, this scare tactic of 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 using pron pronouns or nicknames for students who have been using these, but then the schools now have this kind of they feel this obligation that they have to be uber careful. What are your thoughts about that? So you know, the problem is that we're not trusting our teachers to teach, and I, I think that stems from uh, this control. Um, Dismantling public education seems to be really high on the list of, of what our legislature is doing. And that's really sad for all kids in the state. Um, again, you know, permission slips uh, for kids to use nicknames should be used across the board then, not just for our trans kids. So you're right. If, um, you know, Jonathan wants to use Johnny and a, a parent, you know, signs a form, our teachers are able to use that just like our trans kids. If their uh, a firm name is different than what's on their birth certificate and a parent signs a form, again, we're, we have the right to do that. Our kids have the right to be respected in the classrooms. And I find it really sad that we're not trusting our teachers to do what they're trained to do. When I send my child to school in the morning, as much as, as, as we've heard some of the, the you know, representatives in Tallahassee say they should just be there to learn math and English and, and you know, nothing else, 
I disagree. My child goes to school and a lot of times they're there for seven, eight hours with trusted adults. And I want my child to be looked at not just as uh, a number, as you know, student ID number, such and such. I want them to be there with someone who's looking out for them socially, emotionally, and academically. And so unfortunately for our teachers, yes, they are scared. They are scared to um, to support our kids and to to go the extra mile. And I really think that that's, that's a loss for all of our kids. Our guest is Jennifer Solomon, Equality Florida's parents and family support manager who is involved in Parenting with Pride. And this is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And it's August 22nd. If you'd like to um, call in and, and let, let us know what you think about any of these issues, give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can text 813-433-0885 or email dj at wmnf.org. The, uh, the issue of having students getting support in the classroom that goes beyond the just the teaching of textbooks, this I'm thinking that this uh, survey that I read recently in the Miami Herald might come, come into play in, in that issue. They found that a new community survey from the Human Rights Campaign Foundation found that 80% of transgender or non-binary non Floridians either want to move away or have already made plans to do so. Now, obviously, they interviewed adults, but I think that this, some of the issues that these adults responded to are issues that perhaps trans or non-binary students might encounter in schools. The, this uh, survey found that almost 80% of trans people and more than 45% of other LGBTQ adults said that bans on gender-affirming care affect their physical or mental health or their loved ones, and more than 80% of trans and more than 76% of other LGBTQ plus adults feel that bans on gender-affirming care worsen stereotypes, discrimination, hate, and stigma. So these bans on gender affirming care, this might not deal directly with, with what students have to necessarily deal with, but I, I think this survey is getting to the point of the atmosphere, the climate in Florida. So can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know dozens of families that have had to move. Um, this is the year 2023, and we are literally having families move out of state because they can't parent their child, whether it's a safe learning environment or being able to talk to doctors about what's the uh, correct care for their children. And I think that's a really sad um, mental health of our kids. And as you can see in that survey, um, it's absolutely off the charts. When a child is in school and they're worried about what restroom they're gonna use, they're not they're not paying attention to, to algebra. And when, when they're worried about a, a basic right to use a restroom, is taken away from them. When they have uh, a governor and legislators that are saying, um, you know, you don't deserve to be called by your firm name. Um, you don't have the right to use a bathroom. That absolutely is weighing heavily on our, on our youth and, and all of the LGBT community. You know, as a parent with a child in the school system, um, I don't want special rights for my child. I want my child to be treated just like everyone else. And that unfortunately is very difficult in this state right now. So, you know, when, when surveys like this come out, it, it's not surprising, um, but I find it, it's very, very sad. And, you know, if Florida is being used as an example of what, you know, Ron DeSantis can do to the rest of the nation, I hope people are, are paying attention because um, if you look at economically what's going on in the state, a lot of it is because of these laws. Folks aren't going to move into a state where they feel that they are not in control of parenting their children. And, you know, that is that is our reality here in Florida. The there's also teacher shortages because of the the hoops that they the teachers have to go through the uncertainty that these new laws are causing so this is causing some students some teachers to leave the profession and that means that students are left with classrooms without teachers how does that impact a, a student's ability to learn well i'll give you a perfect example my daughter was a fourth grade teacher in the public school system and she decided to leave because she could not live as her authentic self. She was not going to um, out a student. She was not going to hide the fact that um, she's happily married to her beautiful wife. Um, 
So the example is there of uh, kids that are that are in the teaching uh, in the colleges uh, are getting degrees and leaving the state. Um, that does affect all. We want our kids to have um, the best opportunity uh, to get a, to get an education. And I believe there's over 7,000 empty uh, positions right now at the start of school in this state. And we should be ashamed. We should be ashamed that we are not, you know, our kids are, are in, you know, seventh grade English one year. And if they're going to have a substitute teacher that whole year, they're going to miss out on so many skills that, that they need to build on. And so the ripple effect is, is affecting everyone. And that's why with Parenting with Pride, we are looking to families not only that have LGBTQ children um, in the schools, but allies, because this is something that affects everyone, whether you're a grandparent, whether you're a parent, an aunt or uncle, um, our kids are suffering because of the political power and using our kids as political pawns. Our guest is Jennifer Solomon, Equality Florida's Parents and Family Support Manager, and she's involved in Parenting with Pride. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. One of the things that after Moms for Liberty uh, took off, after it got you know very well known, it converted its activism into a lot of its members running for offices like school boards. I know it's kind of early in the process for Parenting with Pride, but is that something that uh, you see your group uh, focusing on in the future? So our group is focused on supporting families, educating families, and getting them to a place where they can advocate for their child. So for one family, it may look like being able to go into a principal and um, have a discussion, put together a gender plan for their children. Um, for another family that's um, ready to advocate, I, I would love for our for our families um, to get to the point where they want to take that step to run for school board. It's not our focus. Um, but advocating for our loved ones, advocating for our families is definitely something that we support. Some groups have gone as far as issuing travel advisories for Florida, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation, Equality Florida. They say that the new laws in Florida pose risks for LGBTQ plus people. And I imagine that for adults, if it's if if being in Florida or traveling to Florida is risky, it can be more so for students to to they have a lot of uh, of other pressures and other things that they have to be concerned about. Can you uh, elaborate on that, please? Sure. You know, a perfect example. I traveled with my twelve year old um, over the summer, and we landed in an airport in another state. And as my child was going into the bathroom, he turned around with a big smile on his face and said, mom, I can go to the bathroom here and it's not against the law. How sad is that? We didn't go to another country, we went to another state. So, you know, these laws are absolutely affecting our kids. They're affecting um, how they feel about themselves. And, you know, is this state a place that's safe for our children? As parents, I promise you, we're going to make sure that our kids are safe. And that's part of what Parenting with Pride is. You know, we established this statewide hub so that parents can go to one site, to our website, and find information, whether it's on um, how to safely uh, talk to a, to a principal about their child being in school, all the way to what it looks like to travel, what it looks like to, to get a passport uh, for kids that are driving driver's license. We want to make sure that we're supporting our families. For many of them, leaving the state isn't an option. Um, so we're going to stay here. We're going to fight. And we're going to make sure that our families, you know, every child is supported. Every family is respected. Um, that's what we're here to do. And we're going to, you know, with the support of other partners, like you mentioned, PCLAG has chapters all over the state um, that folks can go to to meet other families, to, to provide that community. Um, I think that having allies is going to be crucial because whereas our kids, we know having one affirming adult in their life can change the suicide uh, rates tremendously. For some of our kids, those were teachers. Those were guidance counselors. Those were GSA advisors. And if those folks in their life are being silenced, we need to look elsewhere to make sure that we are that support system for those students and for those families. We're speaking with Jennifer Solomon, who is with Parenting with Pride, and this is Tuesday Cafe. 
And we're getting some emails. Let me read a couple of these. Uh, these both uh, uh, are talking about the group Moms for Liberty, which is uh, kind of a right-wing group that is talking about um, school issues. And she's David writes that, uh, that this is a misnomer, that they're really just moms for fascism, and that the mom that quoted Hitler in a newsletter is just proof of this. That's what David writes. And Bubba writes, it's no, no worth noting that the founder of Moms for Liberty is from Sarasota and is on the school board there. So um, not to focus too much on this group called Moms for Liberty, but the, um, you know, is it too strong to say that that they're not for liberty, that they're actually in, in for restricting restricting freedoms? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, what's really interesting is um, they're very loud, but they're not that big. Uh, there's way more parents that are involved with Parenting with Pride already. We launched a week ago than Moms for Liberty. Uh, many of those parents homeschool their kids. They're not even in the public school system. And I think that we all should have the right to raise our children the way we see fit. I don't want anyone, I wouldn't want to go into anyone's home and tell them how to raise their child. They have the right. They have the right to go to a private school. They have the right to go to a charter school and they have the right to homeschool their child. What they don't have the right to do is to go into the public schools and um, remove books because it's something they don't want their child to read. And so I think that this movement that you know seems to get a lot of attention because they're pretty radical, it's not as big as they seem. Um, I was at the Board of Education meeting a couple weeks ago and there were Moms for Liberty uh, people there and there was way more of us. And it was really curious to me to see many of them were just there. They didn't stand up to speak. They just wanted to be a presence, but our presence was greater. Our voices were louder. It's time for them to go. It's time for the parents of the state of Florida to stand up and say, enough is enough. Parents rights, that, that term we kind of started the conversation with, that's actually in the title of a, a really widespread bill, or now it's two laws in Florida, parental rights and education. Critics have called it the don't say gay bill. It was passed last year. It was expanded this year. What effect is that bill? Is that new? Are those laws, I should say, are those laws having on the state of Florida and about education and um, in, in schools in general in Florida? Yeah. So you know, don't say gay. How, how it's how it's been coined um, really is very vague, and that was done on purpose um, because it seems that every school, every school district is interpreting it the way that they see. Uh, they're obviously scared because um, they can see what what our governor can do that, you know, they don't want to be removed. School board members are are cautioned to, you know, not speak up because they feel that, you know, they don't want to lose their position to help all children. Um, but when we really look at what the what the wording is, it is curriculum. Um, and so, yes, in a kindergarten classroom, no kindergarten teacher wants to be talking about sexual orientation, gender expression. That's not a kindergarten uh, curriculum. So this has been blown up to be something um, that, is, that has never even been in the schools, but the effects of it and the harm we're absolutely seeing because of the interpretation of it. These laws do not require schools to discriminate against anyone. Um, what it does is allow those that are not comfortable, if you're a teacher and you're not comfortable using a, a child's pronouns, you're not forced to. Guess what? I don't want that teacher having my child in the class anyway. I want a teacher that is comfortable with my child. If there's a teacher that says, you know, using he and pronouns, you know, is fine and I want everyone in my class to, to feel comfortable and respected, they are still allowed to do that. So again, the vagueness of these laws really vary state by, uh, not state by state, but school by school. And I think that the key is to really educate all the superintendents and the principals and leadership so that teachers still feel empowered to, to protect and respect our students. The new group, Parenting with Pride, you have a website. And on that website, there's resources for parents and students who are trying to look for just a, you know, a little bit more information about a lot of these topics. Some of them are about anti-bullying and about um, book bans or, or how to access books that people can read if they're having trouble to find them at schools. I'm going to link to the Parenting with Pride 
website on the WMNF.org website, which people will be able to find later. But why don't you talk a little bit more about what kinds of resources you can get on the Parenting with Pride website? Sure. So one of the things that we're doing is we're offering monthly webinars and we're taking information that we get from parents. You know, what are most parents looking for? A uh, perfect example, our July web webinar was all about um, safe schools. What does it look like to go back to school with these laws? And we were able to provide families with a one pager that literally gave them step by step how to ensure that your child is, is going to be safe in school this year. Um, our next webinar is coming up on August 31st, and it's sort of a, now that we're back in school, what are we seeing? And it's gonna be a question and answer. We have a school board member that's gonna be there. Um, and we really want parents to have the opportunity to learn. Again, the more we can educate, um, it's really scary to be a parent in Florida right now. I'll be honest, it, it really is. And we wanna make sure that our families feel supported. Um, in September, we're gonna have a webinar that talks about communication. How do we communicate to others? So, you know, especially if we don't see eye to eye, it's really important to be able to have those tools and we want our families to have those. So you also can go on, like you mentioned, we have websites, uh, we have links to websites to all the national organizations. Um, I work with HRC as well. Welcoming Schools is a phenomenal program, a phenomenal resource for parents um, to go on and find answers and, and find resources, find books that are, that are age appropriate for their children. They have books listed for elementary, middle, even for adults. And so we wanted to, again, provide a place for parents to go and um, feel supported because that's, that's the key to this right now is for us to band together, to educate and support so that we can advocate for our kids. A listener writes in with a critical question. Simon says, a parent does not have the right to raise their child or children the way they want outside laws that protect children, kind of in suggesting that that might be happening. So how would you respond? I want this, you know, I'm assuming this person is probably a parent and wants to protect their child. I want to protect mine as well. Um, Every single major medical association has come out with gender affirming care is life saving care. So I'm going to listen to the science. I'm going to listen to the doctors and I'm going to make sure that my child has what they need in order to live a full, successful life. I want them to to grow up in a, in a safe place. What I decide for my child may not be what this person decides for their child. And that's OK. Um, but they don't have the right to tell me how to raise my child. I'm not breaking any laws. I'm making sure that my child has every opportunity just like theirs. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on Tuesday Cafe, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Jennifer Solomon is, Solomon is Equality Florida's parents and family support manager, and she's involved in Parenting with Pride. I also want to thank our guests from earlier this hour, Stephen Walker and Mike Sanderson. If you missed any of these interviews and you want to watch them, you can watch them on our website, wmnf.org, beginning this afternoon. I want to thank our phone screener, DJ Spaceship. And you've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan, News and Public Affairs Director at WMNF Tampa. During this time slot tomorrow, Shelly Reback will host Midpoint. Her guests will talk about the heat. Dr. Tom Bernard from the USF College of Public Health and forensic meteorologist Andy Johnson will be guests on the show. Next up is Wavemakers with Janet and Tom. Their guests will be Robert Plunkett, a Sarasota writer whose cult classic comic novel, My Search for Warren Harding, was recently republished. This has been Tuesday Cafe coming to you live on August 22nd, 2023 from the studios of WMNF Tampa. You can support programming at WMNF.org. Thanks so much for listening.